Hey, what's up guys? It's Mike with Alpha Reptile back with another video today. Today is going to be a feeding and all my pets video. Uh, I will be feeding everything in my room, I guess minus the isopods, but everything in my room is getting fed in this video. So if you guys want to follow me a little bit closer, make sure you follow me on Instagram. Link's on the screen right now. Make sure you click that subscribe button because I'm going to be trying to pump out as much content as I can during December. So I really hope you guys enjoy the video and Let's get to feeding. And the first course of action is going to be feeding the Euromastix. Of course, part of that feeding is preparing their diet. You can see here that I'm preparing some squash of various different kinds for them. It's definitely a healthy part of their diet and I incorporated in most of their feedings. Here I am using butternut squash as well as acorn squash. And what I like to do is just take all the skins off. Then I end up cutting it into little smaller chunks and for the acorn squash, I didn't show it on video, but what I do is I get a carrot peeler or just a peeler and I peel off a little wedge worth of skin and then I grate it as well. When I'm cutting the acorn squash, I basically just use the naturally divided sections in it already, follow that down to the core and then cut the other side. After I'm done removing the skin, I just simply grate it. For the animals that I'm feeding, it's important to have the finer grating. Uh, I know on your cheese graters, there can be different levels of coarseness to your grates, I guess, and the thin one is what I'm making sure I go with. The last chunks at the end, so you know you're not grating your fingers, I will use as components for my gut loaded for my insects. Um, I feed them little chunks of the squash throughout the time before I feed, just so that the insects are extra nutritious. Now that we have all of our squash grated up, that will last for probably a week's worth of feedings, if not more, for everyone that I feed. And we can just assemble our salad. I have my various different greens here. There's the salad portion, and I'm just gonna mix up the squash a little bit because there's two different kinds. And you can just see just a sprinkling of the squash on top. There we go. One of the final touches is just a pinch of the finch seed. Uh, I don't feed that to them every single feeding, but today happens to be one of the days that I am feeding it to them. And last ingredient, is the Arcadia Earth Pro A supplement. This is a calcium supplement complete with bee pollen. So it's safe to feed every single feeding. Considering my females expected to lay in the next couple months here, I am feeding them quite a bit of calcium. Now with that said, we can simply take this bowl of food and as you can tell, Hugo's already starving. There we go, and we can watch the meat. Hugo's a huge fan of the squash itself, so he goes for that first, typically. And then next up on the list is the chameleons. I've already put food in a little feeding cup there. Uh, it looks like she's gonna be going for one. Get a girly. Oh, she's just going right in. All right. On top of the stick. Easy pickings. <laughs> Their second tank, I just moved up to be in its spot right now. Like, 
yesterday night and I'll be separating these two. The male is down here. Just hanging out. I fed him as well. I gave him a couple crickets more directly. I'm really trying to train them to go up here. That's where food goes and that's where their food source is. These guys are doing really, really well. These are the Bradypodian Thumnabates, South African species of dwarf chameleon. And for those of you, because this video will come out before the tank build, I will be making a tank build video for this whole tank and showing you how I do all the stuff that I did and setting it up, planting it, everything. I also threw some crickets in with here with Vulcan, yellow Monitor. He's doing phenomenally well. He's still kind of sketched out by me and the whole camera and everything like that, which is totally fine. I'm not gonna try and force him into doing anything, but I think I might throw a couple more crickets in there because <laughs> I forgot that I was filming. I'm not sure if you guys watch the like Brian Barcheck vlogs or not, but if you do, you'll know they're training their monitors with that ball that they use. I basically just use the food cup. When I shake this, he knows it's food time. He sees the reflection, that's why he's running that way. But he knows it's food time and then he can go stuff his little face. He's really getting some real nice coloring. Just a beautiful monitor. And if you guys are ever looking for a beginner monitor, Aki monitors are the way to go. I mean, this one was captive hatched by my buddy Cody. We co-owned them and I kept one of the babies. I mean, just look at that creature. So intelligent, very curious. They're even known to have a little like fishing ability. They'll sweep their tail between rocks and catch crickets or force crickets out. So it's really cool. The next order of business is the fruit fly mongers. Got my fruit fly cultures here. I make all my own fruit fly cultures. I don't know why I'd buy fruit fly cultures when I could pretty much make them for only a couple dollars each. Uh, that's all the costs included. Obviously it costs more to buy in bulk right off the bat, but in the long term, it saves a lot of money. First things first we're going to do is, the same as every other time, So this first culture, you can see that it's made on November 9th. So it's getting old. Um, I will be throwing this away pretty soon in the next week or so. But what's nice about this is, I don't know if you guys can see, the Melanogaster fruit flies that are in there are quite a bit smaller than the standard Melanogaster. So yeah, they are a little bit more nutrient devoid, but what I feed these two is actually the baby dart frogs that I'm raising. So I'm gonna get my Earth Pro A again. If you guys are interested in my dusting schedule, uh, you can let me know. I might make a more in-depth video on just what people's dusting schedules should look like rather than typically what they are. And now that we have the fruit flies, I take them here and I just tap the fruit flies. And try and minimize the amount of powder that I get in here. Sometimes more successfully than others. We can just see I have that leftover powder there. Throw that away, grab the flies. And then these are the baby dart frogs. You can, you can see one, his butt shoved up top there. And the other one is quite a bit bigger. That one up top only came out of the water about a week ago, even less than that really. And then the other one uh, came out quite a while ago, so uh, I don't see the other one Just yet But you can see this guy up top there. There we go 
yeah feeding these guys there's not much to it because they're kind of shy they don't even really eat in front of me so Wah, wah. So I'm just gonna get the rest of the fruit flies prepared and then I'll show you the actual feedings of them. I figure you guys don't really want to or need to see me getting fruit flies, dusting fruit flies, and then putting them in the cages again. So <laughs> let's just get to feeding some frogs and some really cute geckos. So we have our cup of fruit flies. We have our hungry participants. A lot of my friends hate on how much I feed. Cause I do feed quite a bit at one time. But this is because I only feed every other day the dart frogs and things. And there's also full adult sized Tinctorius in this tank. So there we go. I love the sound of these guys' tongues when they're eating. It's hilarious. I'll see if I can capture it here for you guys. The flies will take them pretty much two days like the next day I come around there'll be no flies in the tank and that's basically what you're looking for if you overfeed then you'll have a ton of flies left over next time uh, you come around to feed but because I feed only every other day uh, they'll go through like a hundred flies each so it's pretty easy for them to consume what is there and uh, yeah I'm not too worried I know some of my friends freak out like Troy Goldberg he freaks out at how much I feed but you know what? It works. I have healthy frogs. I can say that more than uh, some people I know and their frogs. And you guys might have noticed that I did have some fruit flies left over. And that is because I need to feed some of the geckos and things that I have. This little guy is going to get his paper towel changed tonight. But he gets food. He should zoom out of there. I'd imagine. Come on. Nope, he's trying to eat it through the... You go, Zo. Here. Let me help you out. There you go. So this is the elegant sand gecko that I rescued from work. Super cute little dude. Get it? Yeah. <laughs> so cute. It's too much to handle. And he's typically quite a crazy eater. He'll just straight up run around. Oh, there you go. He just zooms around his tank, grabbing all the flies he can get. It's so cute. And for those of you that might be hating on the paper towel situation, this is one week of it not being changed. I'm sure there are somebody that is gonna get Super butt hurt about it. It will be changed tonight and he will enjoy. Oh, you missed. Good one, dude. Oh, you missed again. Go get him. Come on. Missed again. There. Nope. Did you get him? Nope. You missed him too. I don't have all day, little man. So, here you go. And ladies and gentlemen, that is the ever precious elegant sand gecko that hatched June 10th, I think? It only hatched a couple months ago. Alrighty, so I got some melanogaster fruit flies in there. It's not enough to feed everything, but I'm just getting some for the babies and the baby dart frogs as well. Um, it's worth noting that I am feeding calcium D3 with, I'm using the Rapashi Calcium Plus just because that was way more than I wanted to put in there. But uh, just because the little dudes, these guys, and those guys up top there, they both don't have UVB, so they need synthetic D3 provided to them. Uh, he's not there. This guy is fast and real small. There he is. Look at him. He's just the cutest thing. So this is a Ebonavia eninguis, or a Madagascar clawless gecko. That's what those guys are over there. This is the offspring from them. Uh, he's hiding under that, that leaf right there, but I'm just gonna give him some fruit flies. Uh, I don't think he'll eat in front of us. I kind of doubt it, in fact. But you never know. 
There's his little face. Yeah, he's like, nope, it's hiding time. These guys are crepuscular, I'd say. Uh, crepuscular slash nocturnal. And yeah, so you guys saw what their little progeny, that's a captive bred baby. And then those are our wild caught adults up there. But now we can get a few more flies and feed the Ufaga pumilio. Now we have our fruit flies. I uh, just go in and sprinkle them in here and then basically just throw them to the back. And these guys will come out in time and eat some. Uh, these guys are pretty shy typically. Uh, you probably heard them calling when I was feeding some of the other stuff, but beyond their calling, they're not out too terribly often. Just know that they're all doing well, they're breeding, they're raising their tadpoles, and doing incredible. Alrighty, and here we are. I'm set up at my portable desk, I suppose, and we're gonna feed Sky now. So I have everything that he needs. I have his food dish. I have the raw instincts, raw dog food that I feed him as well. This is something that he really enjoys and is really healthy for him. Uh, you guys can see the ingredients right now. They are top quality and it does a really good job. He enjoys it, so. I'd mix that up every now and then. Sometimes I'll feed him insects. About two or three times a year, I'll feed him mice, uh, hornworms, all that kind of thing. So this is just what he's getting fed today. I have the squash that I grated earlier in the video. Uh, I got some lettuce and then I got a banana. So I guess we'll just start with the banana here. Uh, some people are gonna pick out that the way that I opened that, that's fine. So I'm just gonna cut up this banana and uh, you know, Give it all to him. <laughs> Jokes. No, okay, so something that you guys need to know is that your blue tongues, your bearded dragons, that kind of thing, fruit should only consist of like five to 10%. So really what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna eat this banana and then Sky gets the little butt end of the banana that nobody likes. That's how much he's getting. That's all they need. Uh, they probably need even less than that, to be honest. I mean, it probably wasn't that funny. It wasn't nearly as funny as I thought it was, but I know if Bree's watching this, she'll get triggered by me, <laughs> me starting it that way. So that's fine with me. Um, bananas are good for humans too. Get your potassium, kids. All right, so now that I'm finished my banana, I will thinly slice Sky's banana. I don't know how well you guys can see this. I'm blind and my camera's far away. A handful of lettuce. I, <laughs> it's the same lettuce mix that I use for the Euros. Um, it's nice and easy to get it all. All at one time and they all eat very similar things. So that's good. And then how I end up putting it all together is I will put this, all the lettuce and stuff in here. I'll grab the bit of fruit. And then what I do is I will grab the dog food. This is just one puck. Um, I feed Sky once a week with kind of snacks in between, I suppose. Sky is a very healthy weight and this seems to work really well for me. So in between every now and then I'll give him like a chunk or two of Bluey Buffet. If I go get hornworms from work, then I'll feed him a hornworm or two. But typically he gets one meal about this size. It lasts two days and then I end up taking it out. You don't wanna leave it in there for any more than that. And even the two day mark is kind of pushing it. Um, most of it's gone. There's just some little lettuce flakes by the end but that's how I prepare his food. I totally forgot to add the squash, so I also mix that in there. And the way of mixing, uh, you wanna do it with blue tongues because they're really particular. A lot of times they'll only eat the raw dog food or whatever protein source there is. So if you can, try and mix it up all together. That way it all kind of tastes the same. They end up eating all their veggies as well. The last part that I have to do is add my Arcadia Earth Pro A. Sky has UVB in his tank. I'm not adding anything with D3 in it. Not this feeding at least. Every now and then, maybe once a month, I'll just dose just to make sure. But I see him basking most evenings and things in the D3, so I reckon he's getting enough vitamin D3. That's the preparation, super simple. Now let's go feed him. And 
that's the finished product as you guys have seen. Now it's time to get Sky's attention. Um, it's cool because he knows the red plate. Like if I put in another plate, he doesn't come running over here. But most of the time, if he sees the red plate, he knows is dinner time. Yeah, is that all you have to say? Get in there, dude. Freaking get you some. You just being a shy sky? All right, well, I guess you guys get the gist of it. <laughs> He's going to sit there and chow down some of the rest of his food. Uh, he is a very slow eater, as you can see, but he gets the job done. Now we can move on to the Tortugas. Typically, I'll feed a mixture of the Missouri Aquatic Turtle Diet, as you can see here, as well as the Zoomed Gourmet Repti Sticks. So there's some freeze-dried super worm, or I guess mealworms. There's some krill in this. There is some cranberries, which is always good. And then I will also supplement with dusted crickets, as well as night crawlers. And you can see Drax here is just going nuts. He sees the food, he knows. And then Quill here is a little bit, a little bit more drab, a little more down, you know. That's typically my routine with these guys. Um, I just gotta get this open here. Not quite as easy as the bag. Ah! Really not easy at all. I let the Missouri pellets soak for a little bit longer because they're a lot harder. And then I'll just go in here and do a sprinkling of the turtle sticks. There's a lot of cranberries in his. So what I'll end up doing is grabbing a cranberry and putting it over there. And then I just let him go nuts. Turn around, bud. Here you go. And he's about to climb out. Hey! Hey! Excuse me! Your food dish is right down there. Whoa, he's ready to go. Zoom! Boom, right for the cranberry. And what's your first choice? You're a little confused. Aren't you? Go get some. Typically they just, yeah, like this. They just step right in and uh, get, get, get into the food. You're a little teeter-totter though. Boop. And yeah, they go nuts for five minutes or so while they consume all their food. And then they chill out. So that is the turtle feedings. These guys are a ball. If you guys find these captive bred in the United States or Canada, I suppose, I strongly recommend it. I will say to you, they are not cheap turtles. These things are very expensive, but extremely rewarding. And hopefully you guys can be successful with them. Now that we've fed these guys, we can go make sure we feed the shell down there. Today, it's just a simple Missouri tortoise diet. Um, he doesn't get it all that often, maybe once a week or once every other week. And then two to three times a week, he just gets the same lettuce as I've been feeding everybody else. He loves it. I know it's not necessarily the best food in the world, but it does do the job. And uh, they do really enjoy it. Like watching a child on Christmas. He takes two bites of one, moves to another, takes two bites of another, moves to another. <laughs> Such a goofball. 
but I love them. And next on our nightly journey is Tig. Not sure if that's gonna happen or not. She just gets some Pangea. Feed it to every, about every three days, typically. I don't think she's having this camera in her face, to be honest. The really bright light. Uh, if I catch her up there eating her food, I will be sure to throw it in the video, but she's heading back to the dark depths of her tank. That's the kind of stuff we live for right here. The chonk nomming. So precious. Oh. Oh. Yummy. Whilst I fed Tig, I also put in food with the morning geckos. At nighttime, these guys tend to be pretty alert and they will basically just hide from me all night. Every now and then I'll see them come out, but same goes with them. If I catch them eating, then I'll put them up there. You know, I don't get to see this very often. Look at them go. We're just gonna get some crickets so we can feed some of the nocturnal species because that's who's up next. Got some crickets down there. And now it's time to get after Dixon. I think he already knows what's happening, so <laughs> try and do this as, as efficiently as possible. Good on you. Dixon is a Europlatus guntheri, or a gunther's leaftail gecko. There's no females in Canada of this species, so that really sucks. Otherwise, I have one. Yum. Come on. We're waiting on you. That was mostly your tank, but you know what? We'll accept it. That's all right. He gets a variety of things. If I have phoenix worms, he'll get phoenix worms or the black soldier fly larva. He'll get crickets. Thank you, buddy, for being such a good sport. Next up, we have our boy Striker, who is clearly hungry. Striker's the oldest of the crew here. He's almost 15 years old. Very old boy. But still loving life. Chowing down food like no other. Now that he's been in his new quarters, he is a little bit more skittish than he used to be, but still really good. These are the Cruzio Hylocraspidopus, the fringed leaf frog. Beautiful, that's the male, I think. Uh, now the likelihood of this guy actually eating is about the level of a Christmas miracle. So, um, I guess we'll find out. I need to get a better grip on it than that. All right, so these guys are quite nocturnal, like I said, so I don't think he'll eat but then again, you never know. Oh, snap! Prove me wrong. You punk. Prove me wrong. <laughs> uh, I don't think there's any way the female will eat. She is typically quite shy. But, I did just say that for the male. You guys won't even be able to see her. Oh, she ate too! What the heck? What is happening? Wow! Okay, uh, well, you, <laughs> you guys can hear how shocked I am. Typically they'll only eat one from the tongs for me, but I throw in like five or six crickets and they're all gone in the morning, so <laughs> I cannot complain. These guys are so cool. And you know what? With those guys actually eating, that's gonna wrap up the feeding video. That's everybody in my room that I currently have 
unless I'm forgetting somebody. I don't think I am, but that's everybody. They all ate, which is actually fantastic. I really did not expect those leaf frogs to eat. They typically never eat during the day, but I guess it's just one of those days for them. So I want to thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoy this kind of content and you want to see more, make sure you click that subscribe button. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the comment section down below. If you have any video suggestions, make sure you let me know in the comments down below as well. Thanks for watching, you guys. Catch you later.